Risa, reset. We're, I think we're good. changes Reverend Peekman since you've been here. <laughs> but welcome back. Good so? morning. Back then. We have to leave that up to the president. Are they short? Yeah, and I would say if, if you're, you're not able to do that and it, and it conflicts with getting the work, you can always do a, a call in for it. I'd like to, in the future, to keep things to agenda items and stay on the protocol. I'll allow it this time, but yep. Gotcha. Teresa, we set? Amen. Okay. I'd like to call uh, the RTA Board of Trustees meeting uh, for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024 to order. A roll call, please. Mayor Biasiata. Here. Mayor Kumar. Here. Mr. Love. Pres Mr. Lucas, Reverend Lucas. <laughs> Ms. McPherson. Here. Ms. Mersman. Here. Ms. Pachetti. Here. Mr. Sleesman. Here. Mayor Weiss. Here. And Ms. Welch. Here. We have nine board members present. You have a quorum. Great. Um, we have two items before us, the March 19th, uh, 2024 board meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? Motion, Welch. Second? Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Excuse me, to the chair, we just need to read the certification. Oh, did I skip over that? My bad. Go <laughs> That's ahead. That's fine. Mr. President, I first advise that notice of this meeting has been posted more than 24 hours in advance of the meeting, that the usual notification has been given to the news media and other interested persons, and that all requirements of the Ohio Revised Code and Rules and Bylaws of this board regarding notice of meeting have been complied with. Okay, great. Um, and then a uh, second a uh, motion, please, to um, approve the minutes of March 19th, the annual meeting. Motion, Welch. Second. 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 Mayor Weiss. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, public uh, comments. Um, we're going to start um, um, first on anything on agenda items, a uh, two-minute limit. Um, do we have anybody here in person yes. that would like to present? Reverend Pickney. Good morning. Good morning. Reverend, you just need to hit the mic, the green light right. should come on when it's on. Uh, 
morning. Good morning. Okay. I'm glad everybody's here this morning, live and well. Um, I I am in support of this agenda, and uh, there are a couple of things I would like to uh, point out. Um, first of all, congratulations to the retirees. Uh, secondly, uh, the uh, resolution 2024-25 is this in conjunction with opening back the uh, the port, the line that goes through through the uh, the light rail into the uh, water the waterfront? Is this resolution in conjunction with that? It's related to the new car, rail car purchases. So this switch will be inside of the port. Okay. The, the line itself is operational. It doesn't run every day, but it is operational. Yeah, because I would like to know when it's going to open back up, because it was really appreciate, appreciated. And for resolution 2024-27, I see you have a washing and cleaning service. Would you please remind the public that their children are not to smear all over our windows on our vehicles, walk all over our seats. When you are paying, we are paying people to keep our vehicles clean because I had to say something one time and I was asked by somebody in RTA to let you all handle it. But we're spending money that we don't need to spend if we put a friendly reminder to the people to take care of our, our, our items. For resolution 2024-31, uh, 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 if it's possible, the two bird shuttle, uh, could we have something like that at Shaker Square? Something in that Shaker Square area, in the areas uh, that are smaller communities that would make it uh, easily accessible also for the people who are disabled, who need to uh, transport their groceries and, and other things. And uh, for resolution 2024-30, uh, I like the idea of the protection against internal losses of public assets. I think that your property and your items of concern do need to have some type of um, protection. And I will be back for non-agenda items. And thank you very much. And I'm glad to see each one of you this morning. Thank you for your comments. Are there any other uh, presence on agenda items? Go ahead, Mr. Rodriguez. Yeah, come step over here. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Here we are. I got sensory issues. That hurts. That's okay. Here you are. To the face. There you are. Hello there. Well, I do got some uh, some agenda items. I was just on a train. This is Mr. Rodriguez, formally. I'm a self-advocate for the system, and yes, I do have a couple of agenda items. Yes, I was on a train, and it was smelly. I have sensory processing disorder and possible a little bit of autism and OCD and whatnot. And I did was not comfortable when I ride when I rode this train to get here. It was it was horrible. And I'm agreeing with uh, River Lucas. People need to take care of our trains and. Uh, Reverend Pigmy bus, my bad. I agree with Reverend that they, we need to take care of our trains and our and our services that we receive from you guys. And on the other hand, the paratransit needs to improve uh, a little bit. I had a discretion with a driver. Uh, I was overheating a little bit because I can't regulate my t my my temperature in my body. He didn't turn on the AC until a half hour later. That's one of the issues, and thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you, Tony. Any other members present that would like to, of the public, that would like to make a comment? If not, anyone online, Teresa? Uh, we do have one web form comment. I can send that later, or I can read it now. It's your pleasure. Is it short? It's regarding the easy fare. It's a couple lines. Okay, go ahead, okay. please. Uh, this uh, message is from Isaac Shimsky Agosta of Cleveland, GCRT, still has not fully implemented easy fare. Passengers wishing to board or exit at Tower City must show their pass to an RTA employee and have the employee unlock the fare gate for them. I personally have had to wait for an employee to let me out when there was not one at the gates. 
it is long past time for RTA to connect easy fare scanners to the Tower City fare gates. End of comment. I'm sure. So yes, that customer's uh, experience is correct. We are in the process of getting the equipment necessary to activate those gates with easy fare. Uh, the, our plan was to have that last year. The um, company was unable to produce those units uh, due to COVID-related backlog and inventory issues. Great, thank you very much. Okay, um, public comment, that's it? Uh, I believe that's it, we don't have any on the phone. Great, thank you. Finish. Um, we have uh, three calls in the queue. Okay, let's go ahead with those. Caller number 0387, you're on the line. This is Eric Stewart. If it is your ambition as a group to actually have people comment on agenda items and you know what those agenda items are going to be prior to your board of trustees meeting, there should be some details posted in advance of the meeting as to what the agenda items are and or comments from the Board of Trustee members who will be addressing these um, issues prior, uh, I repeat, prior to the meeting. Public coming to meetings and then not knowing what the agenda items are until the, until the meeting begins, adjustments included to the, to the agenda items, makes it difficult for people to address these matters within two minutes. And I'm noting that most of the time when people call in or come in in person, you, you give little to no response to when they do comment or question on agenda items. You make agreements to get back in touch with people, and then you do not get back in touch with people. You have a community advisory committee that I've been trying to get to respond to matters of policy of two routes, 48A and the 15A suggestions, and nobody has responded to me as, though, as, as to whether they've even studied that, including your board of trustees members, Specifically, Deidre McPherson, who, who's repeatedly referred to as being the supervisor from the Board of Trustees to the Community Advisory Committee. So to what degree do you really want the public engaged if you're not engaging the public on the facts that they need to be talking about in the same period of time that you as Board of Trustee members have them ready to be discussed about prior to the meeting? This is a serious matter. I repeat what I've said to you numerous times. RTA has the responsibility to the social economic well-being of the public through the implementation of public transit. You show very little regard for public input, healthy input, correct input of the implementation of public transit. That's particularly to you, Flonse Cavers. That's particularly to you, India Terry. Caller I don't know the name of the head seven. of the Your two are up. We will now go to caller two. One three seven. You're on the line. Hi, uh, this is Chris Martin. I'm a resident of the city of Cleveland. My comment is um, regarding um, the first item on your agenda, the call to order. Um, you may notice here. Uh, and you'll see why I'm I'm referring to the call to order in a second here, but. You'll notice uh, during these public comments, you often hear from the same people, uh, including me, um, way too often. You, this is a result of when you call your meetings to order at 9 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday morning. This is a very inconvenient time for transit-dependent folks to get board meetings. If you want to hear from a wide range of people, the Board of Trustees ought to consider meeting at a more convenient time, much like the um, appointing agencies that, that all of you come to. Uh, forgive me, I actually I don't know when uh, uh, A or Seven Hills or, or Shakers City Councils meet, but, I, but I, I'm assuming they meet in the evening. I do know that both County Council, Cuyahoga County Council, uh, and Cleveland City Council both meet in the evening, um, which makes it much more convenient for working folks to attend those meetings. 
Well, so I would urge the Board of Trustees to call your meeting to order at a more convenient time for work transit uh riders to attack. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Caller 7935, you're on the line. Hello, RTA Board members and trustees. How are you guys doing this morning? My name is Brian Hagar, 27 year transit rider. And also, uh, I have a concern about what the person said recently. Uh, the lack of cleanliness is bad on RTA trains. Sometimes I have to clean it up myself or, or sit down on the train. Also, another thing, there are people drinking on your train, and that's a, that's a bad problem. And plus, you got people smoking on your train. And I'm concerned for the kids that's riding um, the trains that have to smell that, in order I tell them they have to get off. Um, the ambassadors, it's not enough. Um, we need more productive or more active police officers on your trains at all times. Um, another thing, the lack of on time for one of your bus routes is bus route 940 and sometimes the health line. That's all I have for right now. Um, thank you very much, and y'all have a good morning. That's all the calls you have at this point in time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we will go on to um, the board governance um, reports or any other committee reports that there is anyone that would like to report out on activity in your committee. At this point, I uh, would like to have the introduction of new employees and announcements of promotions. Good morning, Board President Kumar, uh, Dr. Flancy Carver, Caver, and the entire Board of Trustees. My name is Ida Ford. I'm the Manager of Talent Acquisition, here to announce, along with Elroy Gibson, uh, new hires, promotions, as well as honoring our 2024 retirees. Let's jump into it with our operators. Jacqueline Phillips, Asia Dickey, Ryla Riley Inia, Ambika Morgan, Bryce Thurman, Taylor Jones, Donella Swanson, Jaden Thompson, and Yvonne Bush. Continuing on with operators, Karina Strickland, Michael Wise, Mary Ruth Carls, William Smith, operator, Jimmy Smith, Jimmy Hampton, excuse me, hostler, Gwendolyn Mall, operator. As we lead into our operations unit, Joshua Melton as substation maintainer, William Hernandez as equipment servicer, Michael Delaney as equipment servicer. We have Mr. Hernandez, we're happy to announce him again. Also, we have Tyrone uh, Austin as a laborer, Howard Meredith, laborer, Madison Brooks, laborer, Arrington Taylor, laborer, Christopher Switzer, laborer, Nicholas Switzer, laborer. And going to the main office here, Aretha Kroom as contract administrator one, and Kiera Scarver, financial accountant one. Through hard work and dedication, we're looking to announce some of the April promotions. I'm especially happy to announce Kathy Resnick that works on uh, my team and talent acquisition uh, that has um, been a driving force for all of our non-bargaining positions up to 95 vacancy field rate as the new talent management specialist. Tracy Hale as a business process leader. Nikki Ponder as a new business process leader. Robin Payne, business process leader. 
David Reynolds, business process leader, Rosalind Robinson as contract administrator two, Monica Maddox as contract administrator two, Dale Anderson, Anderson, assistant maintenance instructor, and Joshua Deselin as assistant maintenance instructor. We wanna congratulate them all. Thank you for that report, and uh, it's great to see so many new hires. I know that's something that you've all been working very hard on to fill those vacancies, so it's, it's great to see the end result. Thank you, sir. Okay, introduction of resolutions. Uh, 2024 24. Expressing congratulations to the employees of the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority who retired during the first quarter of 2024. Uh, you've heard the um, resolution. Um, any comments? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. To the chair, I believe we need a motion and a second. Oh, sorry, Initially. A second. Okay. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. <sighs> And I believe we do have some retirees here. Oh, we do. Great. Today, uh, and I am very proud, extremely proud to announce them. Some are in the audience, and I'm just going to read some of the names sure. of the retirees that are present. And if you would mind coming up to this area and uh, accepting a small token of our appreciation that Alroy has. And I'll start with 49 years, Mr. Kenneth Yance. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. All right, Mr. Robert J. Tarr is not present. I don't believe he's present, but 38 years honoring him. Thank you. Present today is William H. Nick Sr., 33 years. Please join us. Also present today is Corliss, a.k.a. Carlos Kendricks, 33 years. Present today is Charlene Seals Marshall, 29 years. We're also honoring Neil B. Lawrence, who is not present today. Philip Coggins, at 26 years, is not able to attend today, but announcing 26 years. But Mr. Derek Turner is here, 25 years of service.
Okay. And the last retiree is Tyrone Pryor. I don't believe he's here as well. Um, but we want to give them all a wonderful round of applause and ask you. <laughs> if, if, At this time, if you would like to have any words that you would like to share, it is our pleasure to hear from you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone liking to, if you would like to speak, if you just use the microphone, thank you. It's on already. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank God for giving me the health and strength to uh, be able to work for the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority for 31 years. Um, um, I just want to reflect on uh, when I first uh, had an experience with RTA was uh, uh, having a summer job and uh, my mother couldn't afford a car so I had to rely on uh, public transportation to get back and forth uh, to, to, to work um, and uh, it's just a blessing to uh, be able to, to be here like I said for 31 years and uh, have a job where you can uh, you know pay your pay your house note off and enjoy you know enjoy the retirement and I just want to uh, also, my daughter's carrying on the tradition. She got hired as a rail operator, so I want to thank God for giving her the opportunity to work for RTA, too, and you guys giving her the opportunity to, to work for RTA. Um, well, when, I, when I go to my job, I'll be brief. Um, I did the heating and air conditioning, and uh, there's times when I would think about the, the uh, people that's riding the trains or the buses, and, uh, and I would put myself in their position, you know, getting off work, going to school or whatever, and I'm sure that you know you like to have like we have heat in our cars, and uh, and AC. I would think about those people, you know, going to different places, and that would kind of motivate me, to, you know, to do my job a little better, because I like to put myself in their shoes. At one time, I, you know, we didn't have a car uh, coming up, uh, you know, young, and like I said, I thank God for the opportunity. And that's, that's all. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give thanks to RTA for giving me an opportunity to come here and work for them for these um, 25 years that I've served here. And I had a wonderful experience here working, you know, meeting a whole lot of new, um, you know, passengers and, you know, co-workers along my journey here. And, you know, without this job, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I give God thanks you know, if I'm able to be able to make it to the finish line and, you know, look forward to a, 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 a new chapter in my life, I want to give thanks to you. Good morning. Good morning. I just praise God that I made it through. I came to RTA, single parent of seven, and every day was challenging, raising kids and driving that bus. But thank God I made it through. Thank you. Well, they always say, say the best for last. No. Ah. <laughs> well, thank God. I mean, I first give an honor to God that I was able to have the opportunity to work with great people. And the job that I wanted to do, I love so much that I even went from labor to a servant. And being a servant, you learned how to be humble and you learned how to dedicate your life towards others to help them to continue to keep their job. And I'm thankful to God that I had that opportunity and was able to pass the baton to my brother that's gonna carry on his vision of this um, fight for us to stand strong as a union. And it was, it was just a great honor, like, like Brother Carlos said, it was able to, my job was able to help me to provide for six children and bring them to where they are today. And my last one is in college. So, you know, this is a great job. Then to retire and have a good pension is a great thing. And the state of Ohio, and thank God for the state of Ohio establishing our pension where the union didn't have to fight for us, you know. That's a great thing to have a job like this. And you know what? The best thing about RTA is, is so many opportunity. You have opportunities to grow, to go to any position that you want to go. You choose. 
I worked with great um, Dr. Um, Caver. I worked with Indian Birdsong. Well, I ain't gonna talk about Joe, but <laughs> and I got to um, work with um, Reverend Lucas. But I like, but but through it all, working with the board and the board seeing the opportunity, working with the union, we became as one. RTA, ATU, RTA, and we became that um, force, a driving force that made sure that our public got their transportation and that it, and from A point A to point B. And we did a great job, and we should all give ourselves an applaud for that. <laughs> and, before I leave, I just wanted to let you know my condolences was with Michael York. He was a great man. And I have a young man that, um, that I worked with that you all pretty much knew, too, was um, our ABA of um, non-operations, Frank Hurd. He's fighting for his life right now in hospice. And every day I go see him. He's like a father, a brother, a friend. But, you know, he, done, he accepted life, the transition, and he's ready. But I keep telling him God is not a microwave God. When he's ready for him, he will. But I go see him every week and sit with him and talk with him. And that's a blessing because he was my brother. And that's the way I thought of all my members as my brothers and sisters. I'll fight for them. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Motion Welch. <laughs> and I think we have a second on the floor, so we can, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yep. All the opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, resolution 2024-25. Authorizing contract number 2024-002 <clears throat> with Kennedy Railroad Services LLC for project number 66B, Port of Cleveland Connector Tract in an amount not to exceed $883,443 RTA Development Fund Engineering and Project Development Department budget. Uh, great. Um, before I ask for any comments or questions, we will be requesting a roll call on this. Okay. Any comments from the board? Okay, if not, roll call please. Okay, I think believe we need a motion and a second Sorry. first. Motion. Or second. Second, Mayor Rice. Roll call please. Okay. Mayor Biasiata. Yes. Mayor Kumar. Yes. Reverend Lucas. Yes. Ms. McPherson. Yes. Ms. Mersman. Abstain. Ms. Pachetti. Yes. Mr. Sleesman. Yes. Mayor Weiss? Yes. And Ms. Welch? Yes. You have eight A's and one abstention. It passes. Uh, resolution 2426. Authorizing contract number 2024 5 with Friedman Seating Company for the purchase of rail car vinyl seat upholstery as specified in an amount not to exceed $298,490.72. ,490 RTA Development Fund, Fleet Management Department budget. Any comments from the board on this? If not, is there a motion? Motion, Pachetti. Second. Second, Mersman. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 2427. Authorizing contract number 2024-6 with Premier Window Cleaning LLC for rapid station washing and cleaning services for a period of three years in an amount not to exceed $483,120. General Fund Rail Facilities Maintenance Department budget. We've heard that resolution. Are there any comments from the board? If not, is there a motion? I move to approve. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 2428. Authorizing contract number 2024-023 with Northeast Lubricants, LTD, for the furnishing of transmission fluid as specified and as required for a period of one year in an amount not to exceed $103,000. General Fund Fleet Management Department budget. Any comments, board? I have a motion, please. Motion, Welch. Second, Pachetti. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Uh, resolution 2429. Approving the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authorities 2024 through 2027 quadrennial equal employment opportunity program and affirmative action goals. Any comments from the board? If not a motion, please. Motion Welch. Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 24. Uh, 30. Amending Chapter 464, Protection Against Internal Losses of Public Assets and Section 460.06, Insurance Fund of the Codified Rules and Regulations of the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority. Great. Any comments from the board on this? If not, a motion, please. So move, Mersman. Second, Sleesman. Great. And we have a comment on that from. Uh, Morning. Morning. Good morning. What is the microphone is, on? It should be green. Good morning. Is it there, on now? Yeah, there okay. we go. I'm the director of risk management, Judy Lincoln, and I was asked to talk about the insurance fund and these code provisions briefly to you. I understand that a few questions were raised at the last board meeting on April 2nd, and a memo was provided by India to the board in your board package last week, but they asked me to review these two questions and responses briefly. So I understand the first question was with regard to section 46403, protection against internal losses of public assets. The change that was made in the code was to change the review period for the amount of insurance coverage from one year to three years. And the question was asked why. The reason is that we currently have a three year insurance policy for this and uh, so it gets reviewed at the time of renewal of the insurance policy. So it is not necessarily so that we will always have a three-year insurance policy. So the provision was changed by the legal department now to say that there will be a review each time the insurance policy renews. So whether that be one year or three years, it will be reviewed. But I think I would ask to turn it over to Don Tarka of the legal department for a little bit more clarification on that. Yes, Don? Thank you, Judy. Just very briefly, I wanted to go over the language that was proposed, Judy mentioned, and you have updated language in your board packets attached to the resolution. Uh, the first change that we discussed at the Committee of the Whole changed the time period from yearly to at least every three years. And we had a discussion about that, and the, Judy's explained our answer to the question. What we have proposed now is language that says, at the time of each renewal, and in no event less often than every three years. So the, the answer, as Judy just mentioned, to the question, why did we change it to every three years? The reason is because we now currently have a three-year insurance policy. Previously, it had been every year. So the operational in incentive is to tie the review of the adequacy of the coverage to the renewal of the policy. If the policy renews every year, we would renew it, we would do the adequacy review every year. If the, policy re review, if the policy renews every three years, we would do that renew every three years. Uh, so what the language that we've proposed in the, for the code book also permits is for the Board of Trustees to request a review at any time. So if we have a three-year policy in place, but after the first year the Board thinks that maybe it might be a good idea to check and see if we have adequate coverage, the board could request that. So we have the ability to do it at any time, but no less often than every three years. So it would be every three years at the most. Great. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And Judy, thanks for your overview as well. Sure. I think there's one more question to be responded to. If we could have the next slide. So uh, the second issue was with regard to section 460.06, the insurance fund, and regarding the responsibility for determining a replenishment schedule if a loss gets paid out of the fund. And that was changed to the secretary treasurer from the board of trustees. The question was why. 
because the Secretary Treasurer has the greatest knowledge of the authority's budget and capacity to replenish the fund, uh, the board, I understand, said, well, okay, but if so, we want to be informed of that. And so, again, the legal department changed the language to include reporting requirements to the board if there ever is a need for a replenishment schedule. So that's it for that if there are no further questions. And there's one more slide. I was asked to provide just a little bit of basic information about the insurance fund itself and its purpose. So the purpose of the insurance fund is to pay extraordinary losses within RTA's self-insured retention, which is $5 million per occurrence. Uh, the minimum required balance of the fund is recommended by the Director of Risk Management and is currently set at $5 million to equal one self-insured retention for a catastrophic occurrence. Uh, extraordinary losses are considered to be those in excess of $100,000, and these are paid from the insurance fund. Any loss in excess of the $5 million would actually be covered by insurance, by our catastrophic excess liability insurance program. So. Hopefully that provides a bit of clarification. Any questions? Uh, no, any questions from the board? Thank you so much for that overview. And um, insurance is an ever-changing market, so appreciate your due diligence on, on watching that for the authority. Okay. Motion, Welch. Is there a second? Second, Mayor Weiss. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution 2024-31. Authorizing a renewal lease agreement with Two Birds Shuttle and Detail LLC for a property at the Puritus West 150th Street Rapid S Transit Station located at 4200 West 150th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44135 for a term of 10 years at $12,000 per year for the first year and incremental annual increases to $15,240 for the 10th year. Great, you've heard that. Comments from the board on that? If not, um, we'll need a motion and we're gonna do a roll call on this. Is there a motion? Motion Walsh. Second, Pachetti. All right, Mayor Biasiata. Yes. Mayor Kumar. Yes. Reverend Lucas. Ms. McPherson. Yes. Ms. Mersman. Abstain. Ms. Pachetti. Yes. Mr. Sleesman. Yes. Mayor Weiss. Yes. And Ms. Welch. Yes. You have eight A's and one abstention. It passes. A resolution 2024-32. License agreement for access and lay down areas to support the West 117th Bridge Rehabilitation Project RTA Development Fund, Engineering and Project Development Department budget. Hey, any comments from the board on that item? Um, if not, a motion please, and Teresa will need roll call on this as well. So moved, Mayor Rice. Second, Welch. Mayor Biasiata. Yes. Mayor Kumar. Yes. Reverend Lucas. Ms. McPherson. Ms. Mersman. Abstain. Ms. Pachetti. Yes. Mr. Sleesman. Yes. Mayor Weiss. Yes. And Ms. Welch. Yes. You have eight A's and one abstention. It passes. 2024-33. Uh, Authorizing a lease between the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority and Century Federal Credit Union for office space located at the Hayden District Garage. 1661 Hayden Avenue, East Cleveland, Ohio, 44112. Hey, thank you. Uh, comments or questions from the board? If not, is there a motion? Motion, Mersman. Is there a second? Second, Pachetti. Hey, thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Twenty twenty four thirty four. Um, we have a, a resolution. Mayor Weiss, do you want to um, make any comments on this before we go forward? Be happy to. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Just a few um, 
uh, comments that I'd like to make just to set the stage for this. Uh, as most of you in the board in particular are, are well aware, we have two employees of the agency that report directly to the board. Uh, one is uh, Ms. Birdsong Terry as uh, general manager and CEO, and the second is the executive uh, director of internal audit um, uh, held by Tony uh, Garofoli. Um, we started uh, several years ago a compensation committee to facilitate um, both the review process as well as um, setting uh, or making a recommendation to the board for, for compensation. Um, we did that this year uh, in accordance with the policy that we've um, established over the last few years. And uh, with respect to um, the executive director for uh, internal audit, Tony Garofoli, um, the uh, compensation committee was recommending a 4.3% merit increase to his base pay. Uh, this amount is consistent uh, with the merit pool that has been budgeted um, for all non-bargaining um, employees for, for 2024. Uh, with respect to uh, the general manager and CEO, uh, we did perform um, an evaluation for her, but there is no recommended change in her compensation. As you will recall, we uh, entered into a new employment agreement um, with Ms. Birdsong Terry uh, um, last year in 2023, and as part of that uh, new contract, um, um, there was no adjustment to be made uh, for, for 2023. So with that, um, that is the basis for the recommendation uh, for the Compensation Committee. And I'm um, happy to answer any questions, if, if there are any. I think the board's generally familiar with. There are no questions. I would entertain a motion. Uh, to the chair, I first need to read the resolution, if that's OK. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You hadn't read that. Okay. My apologies. That's fine. <laughs> Authorizing a salary adjustment for Anthony A. Garofoli, Executive Director of Internal Audit. So move, Mersman. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Secretary Treasurer's report. Raj? Mayor Kumar, uh, members of the board, good morning. For those of you online, uh, my name is Raj Gautam. I am the Deputy General Manager of Finance and the <coughs> Board Secretary Treasurer. Um, as we typically do, there's a whole lot of information included in your monthly package. I'm here to essentially kind of talk about the main drivers of the business, provide an overview of the economic conditions under which we're operating. Um, <coughs> so we'll start with um, the economic conditions, uh, as we can see, the blue line represents the rate of inflation with it, which had hit a high of 9.1% in June of 2022, uh, had been declining steadily since then. Uh, in March, however, the inflation did increase to 3.5% from the previous month's 3.4%. Uh, the Federal Reserve has maintained interest rates since about September 2023 at at 5.5%, uh, they are scheduled uh, to meet again in at the end of April uh, and early May, April 30th and May 1, to determine if any further action on the interest rates uh, needs to be taken. March 2024 ridership was 10.3% above 2023 levels. Uh, on a comparison to pre-COVID numbers on the right-hand side of the slide, 2019 at 7.7 .7 million rides on a year-to-date basis, there are 5.8 million rides. That's 1.9 million rides lower when compared to pre-COVID numbers, or a 24.6% decrease. Passenger fares um, were relatively flat compared to February 2024. However, they were 16.0%, 16% above budget. Comparison to pre-COVID numbers, 9.4 million in 2019. Uh, 2024 on a year-to-date basis through the end of March was 7.9 million, showing a de decrease of approximately 1.5 million or 15.9%.
We have not yet received April uh, sales tax from the state. Typically that gets issued between the 15th and the 20th of the month. Uh, we will provide an update when that becomes available. Uh, but going back and revisiting March numbers, for March 2024 receipts, which once again is based on December 2023 economic activity uh, from the point it gets collected and remitted to the state and eventually to GCRTA with a three month flag. Uh, March receipts was 0.7% higher when compared to March 2023 levels. On a year-to-date basis, we're relatively flat uh, at roughly 0.1% lower when compared to 2023. On a year-to-date basis, when you compare 2024 to 2023 levels, 12 of the 23 categories that make up the sales tax base were positive. Online sales were 13.5% higher. Regular and statewide sales were 0.8% lower. And motor vehicles and watercraft were 5.1% lower. With that, I will entertain any questions from the group. I don't, I don't see any. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our... our CEO um, Song Terry is under the weather today, so Fonse Caver, Dr. Caver, will be pinch hitting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Kumar, members of the board, um, and for the people online, I am Fonse Caver, the Chief Operating Officer for the RTA. As the mayor mentioned, our CEO is under the weather today, but so that everyone is aware, she is online and listening to the meeting that we're in. So I'm going to provide uh, the CEO and general manager's report, which will highlight the events that have occurred since our last board meeting. The first is uh, that I'd like to share with you is an FTA transit-oriented development grant that we received in the amount of $700,000. This grant will allow us to uh, provide and conduct a redevelopment study for the Lorraine Avenue corridor. Lorraine is one of our priority corridors uh, where we're looking to figure out how we might be able to improve transit services along that corridor, as well as help to be a catalyst to the transit arena development along the Lorraine corridor. And so we're excited to have won an FTA grant of $700,000 to spend some TLC with that community to be able to figure out how to better serve the residents in the Lorraine corridor. Our CEO had the opportunity to uh, attend the Cleveland Bridge Builders Class of 2024 event. This was an event where the topic was power and influence, and it was sort of a speed dating event where members in the community, leaders in the community were able to meet various leaders of organizations to learn about those organizations, to create a networking environment so that the newer leaders who were in the bridge builders would be able to know who's doing what around the city. So a very positive event where she was able to represent the Greater Cleveland RTA and our role in sustaining a, a strong community here. Uh, this past, uh, uh, be, uh, two weeks ago, we had uh, March 22nd, uh, our Transit Employee Appreciation Day. And this was a tremendous day that provided an opportunity for leaders around the organization to be able to spend some time thanking those employees who provide the services that uh, we deliver to this community. Um, they were given uh, small bags and other appreciation items so that we could really just talk about the work that they do. And so as the chief operating officer and the leader of the operations division, I want to take the opportunity to thank those employees in the operation division who are frontline and continue to provide the superior transit services that, we, that they provide. This here uh, has been a long time coming in our community. And on March 25th, the CEO had the opportunity to uh, spend time in public square with the mayor and county executive as we had the ceremonial farewell to the Jersey barriers. If any of you have written by uh, public square, there's a lot of construction work going on. And so we will have a reimagined public square uh, here soon. And we were excited to be uh, participants in that event. And our CEO said, uh, provided a speech that gave our take and what we believe the benefits are to having a better superior avenue in the middle of the public square. 
Our CEO represented us also uh, on April 2nd uh, as a panelist alongside uh, several women leaders in the city. And the event was the Soul of Philanthropy uh, event. And uh, you know, she gave a conversation on professional development, work-life balance, and educational opportunities for emerging African-American female in leadership. This group's goal is to get more African Americans into the philanthropic uh, world within our community. As many organizations are continuing to understand the modern world that we live in as it relates to cyber security and cyber threats, uh, our team, the internal audit team uh, behind me, Tony Garofoli, and the information technology group, Michael Lively, who's in the back, uh, hosted with uh, the federal government a tabletop type cybersecurity drill. Uh, this drill was done so in order to help us become uh, more prepared should such a cyber event occur. And we have captured lessons learned and will be working internal to the organization and with CISA, the, the federal agency that helps this, to make sure that we have the plans uh, as well as the software necessary to protect our data. As uh, the mayor mentioned, uh, we continue to see more and more new employees uh, in the organization. Uh, the lifeblood of our organization is the bus operator. Uh, they provide the daily services, and they're the reason that we're all here. And so we had an opportunity on April 6th uh, at Tri-C's Metro Campus to host a career fair, and it was a tremendous event. If you can picture the campus on 30th and Community College Way, all of the parking spaces were filled up with individuals interested in working with RTA and becoming bus operators. This is a long cry from where we were a few years ago, where it was very difficult to find operators. But the CEO, along with the director of HR, have made uh, tremendous strides in making sure that our operator pay is uh, more than competitive, that we're market leaders in this community, and that we're able to find individuals who really want to have an opportunity to provide public service and to be public transit professionals. At this event, we were able to offer 213 contingent office offers to employees. Those employees still must go through a background check, drug and alcohol test. But it was a tremendous day of volunteers across our organization helping to bring on the new individuals who may uh, join our team. And so uh, I want to take this opportunity. I see Alroy and Ida and uh, who are here and George and his team. Uh, for the work that they did to be able to, uh, to put on this event, but also for the continued effort that they put to make sure that we have the workforce necessary to provide the services to this community. So thank you guys on behalf of the agency. I want to just give you a hand. And so now that the solar eclipse is gone, uh, I don't know what my schedule is going to do because I've been preparing for the solar eclipse uh, since January. But as many of you uh, were able to uh, enjoy, this was a tremendous day, a beautiful day, uh, spring day in our community. Um, at, uh, for us, we had 57 employees staffed at Red Line stations in Tower City and, uh, and on the waterfront, assisting individuals to be able to come downtown to enjoy the solar eclipse. If you also recall, the Guardian's home opener was that day also, so just a tremendous event. Uh, we had a transit service and a transit day and a day in this community with no issues, just tremendous opportunity for mobility and for individuals to experience our community, and we had a, a, a ball being a part of it. And so uh, I want to thank the operations division staff, as along with uh, those who helped, um, who are not in the operations division, for putting on a tremendous event and for sh make, shining the light on public transit and its uh, ability to help ensure that this is a healthy, safe, uh, and a, an enjoyable community and city. And this is the last slide. Our CEO also had an opportunity 
uh, at the City Club to be a part of the CUBE Symposium. She was on a panel looking at uh, disadvantaged business, minority business enterprises, uh, and capital projects throughout the community. This was held by GCP. And she was on a panel with Bedrock, uh, the airport, and others talking about the opportunities that exist in government and in this community for MBEs and uh, disadvantaged businesses. With that, Mayor Kumar, I'm available to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? I'll just share a comment on the solar eclipse experience. I heard from several people that rode RTA and were in and around Tower City um, that it was wonderfully executed, that it was clear, it was really nice to have those people on the ground helping direct people. Thank you for all the preparations and communications and helping to spread the word, and congratulations on a great weekend. Thank you. There's a terrific team. Uh, when you talk about the pre preparation and communication, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, shout out Natoya and her team for uh, sending out tweets and all of the other things that I don't know what we do, but um, we get it in <laughs> cyberspace and tell people. Uh, I'm still on signs, but uh, great work uh, for the team. Thank you so much. Uh, Mayor. President, One more. Dr. Caber, I also wanted to chime in on that, because you know there's been quite a number of issues concerning what was going to happen with that number of people downtown in that area, and at the same time, having the eclipse go on. And we had nothing but kudos and good comments. So congratulations to the team here and to everybody else who made that day go so smoothly, because that was a lot of people and a lot of things going on. And of course, the beauty of hearing people react to the eclipse, because as it started, you could hear them say, oh, that's not going to be that much. Oh, that's not going to be. Oh, oh, oh. And it was fish black out there. Mm -hmm. And it was just a magnificent day. You did such a good job. I wanted to add that. Thank you, Reverend. And I would just like to say, no, from each of the mayors that um, we all did our own planning in, in the city, but for all of you that did it for the entire system, I know that was quite an undertaking from what we experienced in our own cities. Um, and so much of the work that went on behind the scenes, people will probably never see, but it's great to have a solid plan in place. And I echo what the Reverend just said, so. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> we, we did, we did. It was a really narrow path, but it, we, we fit it in. Um, just under the uh, president's report, I um, had worked with the CEO, Birdsong Terry, on uh, the committee assignments. I think those are sent out. If you have any final questions, let me know. And then we're going through, and we're very close to finalizing uh, the conference schedule. I know we need to work with Teresa on that as some of those are starting to open up. I'll have a couple questions for some of you, but um, just trying to make sure we have proper coverage and it fits um, your skills and interest. And so we'll have that out very soon. And um, if you've not gone through um, um, the travel procedure, Teresa will guide you on that. But we have a very strict procedure on using P cards for travel related expenses and um, documentation on that. Uh, any old business? Under um, new business, um, requested a presentation. Uh, this was first um, given to the board. Um, uh, um, to the external and stakeholders relations and advocacy committee, but I wanted to do it to the whole board um, back in April 12th of 2022. And um, I know we do have uh, an um, individual that's concerned about some of the next gen route changes. And I just wanted to, we've had so many new board members, I thought it was good to set a baseline on some of the work and, and that had gone back based on um, input from the community on some of these changes. So I'm going to turn it over to Joel and, and let you highlight that and walk through it for us. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mayor Kumar and members of the board. Joel Freilich, Director of Service Management. Um, as you can see, I haven't made any changes to this presentation dated April 12th, 2022. Um, there was one change, it took 10 minutes last time. I've been asked to do five minutes this time. So I'll go kind of quickly, but you will sometimes hear uh, Mr. Stewart mention the term 48A. 
And what he's talking about is the fundamental question as to whether all trips on the number 48 bus line should serve Marymount Hospital. Because before next gen, half of the trips on the number 48 split off the main route, didn't go to Marymount, ended at South Miles Road, and those trips were labeled 48A. Um, keep in mind, by going that way, the trips that they were, the bus stops they were not serving had almost twice as many riders as the stops they were serving. So when we looked at this as part of this community-driven system redesign based on extensive public input throughout the year 2019 and through the fall of 2020, we decided to create a new next-gen version of Route 48 to provide 30-minute service to Marymount Hospital simply by having all trips stay on the same route and go to Marymount Hospital. When, uh, uh, when Mr. Stewart challenged this decision, we told him that we recommend staying with this improved next-gen alignment for these reasons. It prioritizes access to health care and jobs at Marymount, which is a key input for the public. Also, all stops on that former 48A branch remain served. It's just that the number on the sign changed to a 50 instead of a 48A. The 50 has a lot in common with the former 48A. Like the 48A, it still provides riders in that neighborhood one seat access to the entire university circle area, including all of its major institutions, and one seat access to 12 connecting RTA east-west routes, including the health line and all rail lines among those 12 routes. Moreover, those affected stops that used to have a 48A sign and now have a 50 sign, despite their low ridership, we upgraded them from five day to seven day service. Mr. Stewart then came in with a counter proposal. He said, still, I want my 48A to be like it was. If you want two trips an hour to Marymount Hospital, I got an idea, I'll ex why don't you extend the 50 to Marymount? Extend the 50 to Marymount, and that way you'll have two trips per hour to Marymount. One of them will be labeled 48, one of them will be labeled 50. Problem solved in Mr. Stewart's view. We assessed it. Problem's not solved. It's not too bad when you leave Marymount, but it's a big problem when you're trying to go to Marymount because very likely you are riding on a principal east-west arterial route, one of our strong routes like the 14, the 15, the blue line, the green line. And now you want to get off and go to Marymount. Well, under Mr. Stewart's plan, there's no place to get off the bus to find half-hourly service to Marymount. No place. There's two places where you can find hourly service. But that's not what you want when you're on the 14. You want to know, where can I get off and get half-hourly service to my destination? So that's a big, dis big disadvantage and why we didn't implement that proposal. There's an additional disadvantage, and there are major apartment buildings on North and South Moreland, which have been enjoying this 30-minute service to Marymount Hospital for three years now. I don't want to take half of that away. That neighborhood, in fact, has the highest population density in all of Cleveland as measured by housing units per acre. So we think it needs to stay the way it is. This uh, brief illustration by a map, on the left side is our strong blue route going past through those large apartment buildings near Shaker Square, providing consistent 30-minute service to Marymount Hospital from University Circle. It's a principal route, and yet, the less lower ridership routes, lower ridership stops are all served. On the right, nothing is in blue because nothing is half hourly. We're sticking with the one on the left. Next, you'll hear Mr. Stewart talk about 15A. What he's referring to is that nearly 20 years ago, a study was done and it showed that ridership was much, much lower on Walden than on Harvard. No surprise. Harvard has residential and commercial. Walden has only residential. So more than 20 years ago, it was put out to the public, maybe all the buses should be on Harvard. Most passengers agreed 20 years ago. Some disagreed. They pointed out that there are some pretty good ridership trips 
on Walden in the rush hour. So 20 years ago, we decided let's retain a few rush hour trips on Walden because they're not doing too badly. Later, we stopped using the term 15A and just called it 15 via Walden because the only thing that's A about it is that it goes down Walden. Next gen, time to re-examine based on community input. Community said, you know, you need to concentrate on job access. So we said, hey, let's go look at the ridership on Walden. Remember those rush hour trips? They were doing pretty well. Let's see if they're doing well. They weren't doing well anymore. Very lightly used. So we followed the community guidelines. Don't go on more streets. Give us frequent service on main streets. We simply didn't take any trips out of the neighborhood. <laughs> Just moved them to the main street. So right now, we have NextGen. It's got 15-minute service on Harvard, at, which continue, c c includes the Lee Harvard Plaza that any Walden trip was missing. That plaza alone has dental, pharmacy, banks, library, Dave's Market. It's very important for shopping and jobs. Walden has only residences. So of course, we recommended retaining the NextGen service. Mr. Stewart's persistent, so he designed his own route. It's about 12 miles long. He called it 15A because he wanted to. And he, he designed this long, 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 long route. The, but the, here's what the route looks like. It goes down Walden and other residential streets. And then the rest of the 12 miles, it goes down streets that already are served by the next gen system. 12 miles long short period in here at the low ridership stops. It runs hourly according to his proposal, and all the other 12 miles are served by service that's more frequent, adding almost no value to the system and still requiring a bus and a driver, several buses and some drivers. Here's what 15A looks like when you slap the next-gen system on top of 15A, you find that red and blue have covered up the inferior gray hourly service everywhere except those handful of stops which have proven to be low ridership. Remember, we did extensive community input by going to lots of meetings, giving lots of on -time online opportunities. But don't forget, there is another way that the community communicates with the RTA about their wishes. They communicate with their feet, which bus they get on, which bus they ignore. And so it's all lined up. The spoken word, the vote with your feet, is saying go stick with the next gen plan based on the values expressed by the community. So we're staying with the plan. Thank you. Great. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Item 21, public comment. Uh, two minutes on public transit-related items. Do we have any in-person comments? Good morning again. Good morning. Protocol in the room has already been established, and I also want to send out greetings. I love you and I miss you, Mrs. India Birdsong Terry. I came home to see you, and I want to send greetings to uh, Mayor Justin M. Bibb and Cleveland City Council President Blaine A. Griffin. I'm Reverend Pamela M. Pinckney. Uh, and I'm doing a new thing. I'm running for president of the United States of America as an apostolate doing a new thing. And today, I had requested also that the Cleveland Division of Police would have representation here because one of the things I do is I'm a gap bridger. And therefore, if there were any questions or concerns that the board would have for the Cleveland Police for what is transitioning in these times, the Cleveland Police are here to answer your questions and work out any solutions and situations that may need to be addressed. In this new thing that I'm doing, I'm meeting the needs. I'm glad to see that in one of the resolutions you, that you are not in with the agenda to abolish affirmative action. 
affirmative action is a main attraction that must never be abolished. And people's needs and rights uh, of color that are non-white must be met and be treated fairly. I'm glad to see also that this board is beginning to put people of color in position, not just there's a white and, and non-white balance of decision makers in RTA as well as male and female. Uh, one of the other things that I would like to see you do is I would like to see you have the uh, agenda in Braille and uh, for the hearing impaired so that the people who do have those issues would be more on topic and available to have the information accessible. Another thing that I am concerned about, there's absolutely no excuse for homelessness in this country and for mass incarceration. Thank you to, I don't know your name, I, I know you said it before. Ida. Ida, okay. uh, For uh, helping increase the employment process and uh, making people uh, not be in the recidivism process and the homelessness process of all colors. And uh, I brought something to you, council, uh, to, I was going to say, board president. I brought something that I have, which meets needs that you all can use in RTA if you so desire. What I have on here is I go to events and I ask the person's name, their needs, their concerns, their comments. What do you do all day, every day? If we knew what people had on their minds to do all day, every day, we would know what they're committed to and that would bring down violence and many other concerns, homelessness and some other things. At one time, RTA used to give away bus passes to people who came out of homelessness or jail or whatever and make sure we have their contact information. We need to work together. We have to bridge gaps. We have to meet needs. There's no excuse for homelessness. Last night I saw something as my time uh, expires that really saddened me. I was out at Southgate Transit Center and the homeless people lived there and it was filthy in there. As you do those shuttles that I requested, please see to it that there are some in East Cleveland and Warrensville Heights as well, especially to go up that hill in East Cleveland. There is a concern of how people, and East Cleveland really needs a lot of help. Thank you very much for your time and. I'm glad all of you are doing well, and congratulations on all the retires, Mr. Nix. You and I have never, not always agreed, but I do appreciate the work that you have done, and thank you very much, and I wish the best to your family and, and, all, and your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other individuals? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Lou. Uh, sorry that I, I, I know uh, this is a precious time, but uh, since the IHOC Technology Committee meeting has not been posted yet, I would like to address the issue right now. Um, with the solar eclipse, people have been excited, and also with the same trouble with all maybe the signals, who, who, who are we to say and it's not happening even before that, right? Um, for the recent month, a couple of months, I have observed a serious situation. It's not only service itself uh, we have to consider, it's also our technology. It's been known nationwide in some uh, national transportation, public transportation meeting, I have learned that uh, in Cleveland, our transit system, our um, real time uh, display, it's not very real. In other uh, area, other states or other cities, they consider maybe it's about within one minute or even within 30 seconds. However, Cleveland, we do not have that kind of technology yet. I guess solar eclipse probably did something to it. Um, recently, the situation has been for lots of riders, including myself. It doesn't matter, it's a popular route, we can have a 15 minutes, or it's the not very popular route, we have to wait for 30 or 45 minutes. When you use the uh, GCRTA website, the real time destination will show uh, this bus is either behind so many minutes or ahead so many minutes. But in reality, I have experienced many, many times that it's not accurate. 
So that means we probably do have IT issues to go with it. Because if we can re reflect the real time with a shorter time frame, it, the information show on our website, or if people using Google Map, Apple Map, all those routes will also be more accurate. In that case, our on-time performance would not be having a misleading numbers because actually, lots of time when I missed the bus, our bus actually were on time as the original schedule, but now with the real time on the website showing it's how many minutes behind or how many minutes ahead. So I guess this is also an IT issue, and definitely we have room to improve, and we should work on it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else in person? Okay, if not, um, at least we have anyone um, remotely. Uh, we have nothing on the web form. Do we have any calls in the back? We have one caller, caller 0387, you're on the line. This is Eric Stewart, and if anybody actually wants to know what I convey in reference to the number 50, 48, 48A, 15A, 11, 15, it's readily available. Joe Freilich misrepresented me, as he often does. So does um, Flance Cabers. So I'm going to address all of what Joe Freilich said. Here, here are the facts. The number 50, if it commenced at Marymount Hospital with the number 48, would give 30 minutes service up to miles and 131st Street, where anybody would want to transfer to some other bus, including the 19, of course, could do so. This would be going north, and this would be going south. It would still give 30 minutes service to University Hospital. And, the end point, and everything in between till you get to the end point at 93rd because the 50 would still end at the same spot where the 48 ends. The issue here is the 48A being taken out of service for the wrong reasons. The public is the only, only gave this request to Joel Friley, and that is give the 48A weekend service. That was the only request. Joel has no, nothing from the public requesting the number 50 bus. Most of the people that would have transferred to the blue and green line off of the 48A were, were going to be transferring at Shaker Square where more retail and safer transfers are available. He made a comment about the 48 having twice the service from 131st miles to Marymount than the 48A does. That's probably true but he wouldn't give you the number of the people that were getting on and off the bus at that time to know to what degree is irrelevant. So he misrepresented that. He also misrepresented this. I've never referred to the 48A as my route. I don't, I don't have any possession or great fondness for the route. I have a great fondness for the efficiency of public transit in the city of Cleveland. Joe Freilich and Flance Cavers do not. Referencing the 15A, I repeat, if you want to know what I actually suggest, it is open to be viewed from me. So Pinecrest Shopping Center, to my knowledge, didn't even exist 20 years ago. And the 50 Caller 0387, your time never is ran up. through Shaker Square. We have no more calls in the queue. Okay, thank you very much. All right, item 22. Uh, the next board meeting, regular board meeting, is scheduled for Tuesday, May 21st, 2024, in the boardroom of the Authority Route McBride Building here at 1240 West 6th Street, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, that'll be at 9 a.m. as it has been in the past. Um, item 23, is there a motion for adjournment? So Second. Sure. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.